Welcome, homeschool. Naismith Homeschool, hashtag Naismith Homeschool, number two. Okay, uh, we're going to be, if you're watching this in hindsight, uh, it's not going to start till about eight minutes time. So you just slide the thing onto about eight minutes and you'll get the start of the lesson. But uh, if you want a little bit of information about what you need to set up, then stick around for the next eight minutes. Mm. Right. Hope you're all staying safe at home. Uh, if you're watching this sometime in the future, this is a dystopian past where we all had to stay in the house. Uh, and this is why these, these classes are, are going on. So it's a free art class for your homeschooling needs for your kids. Uh, but also for you guys to learn a bit about creativity and how to uh, interpret artwork, I guess. Uh, kids are very good at picking up some of these things that uh, adults have no idea about. Um, so don't worry about the age range. Uh, anything from 5 years old to teens to 50, 60, 70, 80s, 90s, in the hundreds is going to be fine. Uh, even if it's just entertainment. Uh, today we're going to be working with, well I'm going to be working with, with the kids with Sharpies. Uh, and it's these type of Sharpies which has a, a thick side and a thin side. So, a marker pen. You just need a thick marker pen. Uh, I'm starting to find out that some of these Sharpies aren't actually thick enough. Uh, so we're, we're just uh, practicing with, with just going over lines twice to get a double thick line, if that makes sense. It's going to be just simple drawings, but the, the concept's going to be based on the mosaic work of Anthony Gaudi. Antonio Gaudi. Okay. Uh, the thin side as well needs to be some kind of a fine liner. A 0.5 or below is good. If you don't have a fine liner, like a fine black pen, rather than choose a pen that isn't that fine, you'd be best off just with a sharp pencil. So uh, as, as long as the... the it's something that makes a fine line uh, is better than anything that makes a fine line is better than something that makes a line that's going to be too thick. Um, what else do you need? Pens, something to create colour that isn't paint. So last time there was a few people, um, a few people that didn't have any paint. So uh, I thought it'd be nice to do at least one where we're not really dealing with any paint at all. Uh, and you can do this with felt pens or um, or pencils or crayons or anything. You need to have a decent range of colours though because what we're going to do is just move slightly between uh, colours that are roughly the same. We're also going to be putting colour on top of pen. So if your pen isn't permanent, you might get a very messy uh, end result if you're working in uh, felt pens. So if your pen isn't indelible marker, permanent pen, your best bet is to stick to coloured pencils, if that makes any sense. So uh, you should be all right if it's, if it's permanent pen. Anything else? No, I think we're good to go. So uh, there's gonna be, a, we're gonna start off with a quick explanation of the kinds of um, inspirations uh, about uh, what we're basing this on. And then we're going to kick off the lesson. We're going to the kids are going to start drawing some five, just five, ten minutes in. And then while the kids are drawing, uh, we're going to discuss some slightly more um, in-depth um, ideas about fragmentation and interconnection. Uh, so, um, so for some of the older kids as well, it might be good if you're doing some written work for. It means some of the information here could be taken into account if you're in third year art school and you want to write a, a dissertation, uh, but also if you're doing A level art and you want to, uh, you have a written part of that. You know, some of the some of the information here is a starting point for that um, and something to think about for that. So it's it's kind of for all ages as well. For you professional artists out there or just uh, keen amateurs. Um, there's going to be some uh, relationship to how some of these concepts can help your painting, if that makes sense. So, 
it's going to hopefully incorporate everything. If I get all that in in one hour, that's going to be good. Um, we're, we're just going to it's just going to take us up to probably twelve o'clock. But uh, if we're all good and the kids are working away well, uh, we'll finish it up early. But you, this is going to be with uh, an idea that if you're doing art classes or uh, doing a little bit of art with the kids uh, later on in the week or between now and next Tuesday, because I'm going to do another one next Tuesday, um, which will be at the same time, UK time, 11 o'clock, uh, which is two minutes time. Um, so like next week there'll be a, a, another one. Uh, hi, people are starting to sort of log in here. Good. So how many we got? We've got 23 live. So the one from last week has now had about two and a half thousand views or something like that. So it seems that most people are not getting it live, uh, but it's it, it seems to work the best. If I, I, I could edit it all up nice and uh, have a much shorter video and more professional, uh, but it seems like a nice format to work it on a, on a kind of uh, live basis. So uh, stick in the comments below where you think that that's a good uh, format because uh, otherwise it could be uh, in a much shorter video that takes much less time, but I just think when it's in real time and people are sort of drawing along with us and we've got, I've got the kids here, uh, and with the kids drawn along with us, and here they come, yes, early. The bell hasn't even gone yet, and they're in. <laughs> well done. Oh, your clock's gone. Okay, it's one o'clock. Right, can we shut the door? It's freezing out there. Freezing, freezing, freezing. Okay, home school is in. If I say home, you say school. Home. Home school. Home. Kids that are in for home school, 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock on a Tuesday is creative time. Not just 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock on a Tuesday, and if you guys want to continue these pieces of artwork, um, you know, throughout the week, um, you don't need these pins on this week. Guys, you don't really need to cover much up or, or do much in the way of, of prepare a surface because we're going to be working felt pens or crayons, or These colored are all pencils. Mine. These are all Sophie's <laughs> colored pencils and crayons. Now. That's me. So that's great. Okay, now you guys have been trying this out yesterday. Cards. So Yellow, black, pizza, pizza face. Pizza, pizza like face. That. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, guys, look at my pizza face. Did, did you like it? <laughs> Why pizza you slice? Like because I like pizza. Right, so all this, uh, all this painting stuff that was done, so we'll just take that away. Okay. Oh, it's nice here. What we're going to do is we're going to do a lesson based on... Yeah, just turn you around so that you... Right, if you can all Hello. see uh, Aaron, I'm just going to... Hey. Hi. Okay. You can everyone see Aaron? Right, Aaron, if you move up a wee bit, I'll just push your chairs in. And uh, we are going to do a lesson based on fragmented and interconnected. Do either of you know what these two words mean? No. 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 Good. Learn something every day. Oh, that is good because it means you're learning something or about to. So. Fragmented, what do you think that means? What do you think it means? First um, of all. Uh, uh, it's a frog, also known as a frog, I don't know. Nothing to do with frogs, no? <laughs> Sophie, any, anything to add to that? Um, frogs are green. Okay, fragmented is just a fancy word for saying broken up. Oh, oh like that? Yes, exactly. We've prepared some... Uh, uh, yeah. We were just checking out to make sure that the, that the kids are going to take to this. Good. So this was done yesterday. So fragment, if fragmented means to break apart, interconnected is just a fancy word of saying, well, connected. Yeah. When everything's connected to each other. So the reason for theming it along these lines is because of our predicament at the moment, which is we are all fragmented 
and isolated. Because we're in isolation, we're separate from other things, other people, which is a shame. Who's missing their friends? <laughs> me, 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 yeah. me, me. And if, if maybe my there's some people, right there, hi. Yeah, maybe, maybe there's some people from your school yeah, at Ox Gang and Kirk and Killer um, uh, out there watching as well. Any, anyone from Ox Gang? Anyone from Ox Gang? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyone, yeah. Anyone, okay, so. Our school. Yes. And what we're going to do yeah. is we're going to have a think about that term of isolation. So we're all isolated from everyone. You can't see your grandparents, you can't see your friends, you can't see your family, you can't yeah, see. Can't even go to the Park. Yes, and you're getting mighty fed up with your pins, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, but what you can do is see pizzas because you, you have this on the screen. Yeah, pizzas. Okay. Pizzas. Aaron, someone from High Park is watching. Someone from High Park Yay! is watching. That's Aaron's old school. Yeah. Aaron's old school in Possum. Aaron here. That's his old school. Yes, your old school. Do you miss your yeah. old school? Well, you're certainly isolated from your old school. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. So. You're all very much isolated and fragmented, which means, Sophie? All uh, broken apart. Broken apart, yeah, you're all broken apart. However, we can all stay interconnected. How are you, how are you staying interconnected with everyone? By going to school, but we can't do but that. You can't go to school. How are you staying interconnected with your aunt and uncles and your grand and grandpas? And FaceTime! FaceTime, yeah, FaceTime. And, and like we're, we're using and we're interconnected with the whole world. We're interconnected with 45 live viewers yeah. today, which is good. And we need to remember that because we are human beings that need to be interconnected with people. So we have two things. We've got fragmented and interconnected. They seem like two very, very different things. Well, di similar yeah. concept, but very different opposites. Yeah. And sometimes when we're painting and drawing and artists are always thinking about another word that you're going to learn, which is contrasts. Anyone know what contrast is? No. It's a fancy way of saying difference. Uh, so if one thing's fragmented and one thing's interconnected, then that creates a contrast or a difference. So uh, white is really different from black. So yeah, black and white. Black is darker and white. Black's is the lighter. darkest you can get, and white's the lightest you can get. So together they create a really big difference. Difference. Oh. Fancy word. Contrast. Well done. So <laughs> <laughs> you thought it, but you didn't say it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. So. We've learned about contrast, we've learned about different uh, ways of thinking about how we're connected. So, the drawings that we're going to do are going to be based on... Like these? Yourself. So you're going to draw yourself in the middle of your page. And you can represent yourself in any different ways. You can put a symbol down instead, or you can put a, a robotic kind of face. Uh, but we're going to use... Uh, very much kind of straight and angular lines because there's going to be another contrast coming. Uh, so you want to represent yourself. Don't make it too small. Probably Aaron and Sophie's are on the small side. So uh, maybe if this was my bit of paper, this is a this is a face here. So if so, some of the older kids can represent their face in shapes. So. The crucial thing about representing yourself in the middle of your page will be to enclose every part of your drawing. And that means to finish up a shape. Right. And I'll just show I you how that works. Part, so, you should do it so I have a smile on it. If you I you can do it very, very simply oh. by maybe it's just a square and maybe it's a what mouth mean, like right? that, maybe it's a nose, but every Ow. single shape needs to be enclosed. <laughs> and that's because we are going to create an image based on really a mosaic. So we make the lines really thick with a marker pen and we represent ourselves in the middle. Now you can do any kind of shapes you want to represent eyes, nose and mouth and you can be very, very simple about it. Very simple about it if you want. Or you can be very complex about it. Now, 
If you want some inspiration for a complex thing, this is a little bit like a logo design because it's a simplification of shapes. Yeah. And you, and you make everything logo. down to shape. Or that could be a logo or If you want some inspiration, maybe for some of the older kids, uh, there's robotic faces that are done in a really good way for a logo this with the Transformers logo. logos. So if you Google Transformers, uh, Decepticons and who are the other ones? Autobots. So there was two, th th there's two symbols and it's a really good example of how a face can be broken up into shapes and these are robotic shapes. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. So you can either start now and listen to the reasons why we're doing all this and get your yourselves uh, jotted out. Aaron and Sophie have got theirs. So Fire away. If you want any uh, uh, idea of what, how, how big these should be, roughly, right. roughly half the size of whatever size of paper you're working on. Mom, so this is probably Dad. a third, so it's a little bit small. Uh, this one's probably a quarter, so it's a little bit small. So ha about half the shape. Fill up a bigger Dad, bit of space. Can you with the, a, leave the, uh, yes, you can start colouring in that just now. Why not? Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, uh, if you're continuing with uh, creating your face, uh, the next step, and you might need to look up to your screens at times, kids, to find out what we're doing. Uh, what we're doing is we're using our thin, fine pen. We're going to split all this up into sections. And I'm going to show you some inspiration of how to do that. So, I mentioned that we were going to be looking at the work of Anthony Gaudi. Gaudi! Or Antonio yeah. Gaudi. He has I lots, he's an architect and he lived between the 1800s and 1900s. He died in the 1920s, so 100 years ago uh, was when he did things. So, uh, but when he was producing his many his many pieces of architecture, his inspiration was nature. So one of the things that Gaudi said was, there aren't any straight lines and sharp points in sharp corners uh, in nature. And so because he was inspired by nature, he didn't want any of his buildings to have any straight lines or sharp corners. And you can see the results, which are very sort of organic, very, uh, very kind of uh, undulating sort of curves and, and things like that. So we're going to be inspired by nature's curves later on in the picture. So, incidentally, if anyone's finished their little representation of themselves, can I just show the camera? Just to show you how we're fragmenting that up is because Anthony Gaudi, Antonio Gaudi, Antonio. yes, uh, used a lot of mosaics. So we're going to create a mosaic, and a mosaic is, do you know what a mosaic is, kids? Um, yes. Yeah. Are we guessed? Um, it's like, you like make something out of a colour. Out of a colour or yeah. colours? But just lots of little pieces. What Anthony Gaudi did, Tony Gaudi, if you can imagine all your plates smashing of different colours and then you created an image out of all the little pieces of ceramic, because plates are ceramics, all those little pieces of ceramic and then create something out of lots of little pieces. And this is what Gaudi did in and he loved some Antonio bright colours, so bright colours is, is my influence as well. And just look at that roof line, so if we look a little bit closer to that roof line, uh, or other roof lines, and some of these things are really, really colourful, and they're all broken up and fragmented when you look closely. And we're going to talk a bit later about why it makes it so interesting to have something 
fragmented or broken up like this. So uh, one of the reasons being that it can work on different scales or when you step back and look at it, it can look very textural and when you look closely at it, it can take on a, a completely different abstract feel and you see the shapes very differently. So there's a picture, wow, of a lizard by Anthony Gaudi at Guel Park or Park Guel um, and that's in Barcelona and when you look at the mosaics on that quite close up you have that Antonio Gaudi was an architect but he wasn't a conventional architect what he liked to do is instead of blueprints, who, who knows what blueprints are? Me, uh, hey. blueprints that are blue. Yeah, blue mm -hmm. prints and um, like if you were designing like for an example a house, mm -hmm. um, you would make a blueprint of what it would look like. Yeah, so it's plans for what you're going to build. Yeah. It's like, so it, it, it's very two dimensional, so you make everything flat. So you do the floor plan and you do the walls and you do how it's going to look from the side. Instead of doing that, a lot of the time, Gaudi, because everything was so curved and inspired by nature, he used to make mock up small models instead of doing blueprints because then he could manipulate them and change the shapes. So there you go, inspired by nature. So, mm -mm -mm -mm. so why does this relate to my work as an artist? Then I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna show you very quickly why are you doing that. Hopefully you're all at maybe the stage where uh, the central representation of yourself is in the middle of the page. The next part is you're going to represent your relatives and friends that you miss so much and you're going to place them around. Now younger kids you can always represent them by just doing things like symbols or stars. So I did this quick one before, so there's a representation of myself, and it's all broken up inside. It's like oh, everything's broken, but it's like it's been made out of a mosaic. And then the other people are round about. And then what we're going to do is show the interconnection with them, with these undulating curves inspired by Gaudi's nature. That's the idea. Every single section of what you do will be an enclosed shape. So everything that you think about doing is an enclosed shape. We talked which about is, that yesterday. We did, didn't we? But we didn't yeah. talk to all these guys about it yesterday because yeah. they weren't here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you're looking at symbols, you could start off with the sun and the stars that, that surround them because all your friends are stars, all your relatives are great stars. And uh, so there you go. So uh, this shows you how you're going to colour it. Now, when you come round to colouring it, I'm really liking what's happening here because you're really inspired by uh, Anthony Gaudi with his abstract uh, colours from different parts of, uh, of the colour wheel, uh, all around the colour wheel, and each section is going to be broken in. If it, if it helps, you can colour it before you do the fragmented bit if you want because you, you would actually be able to see what you're doing better if it's very, very intricate by the time you've done all the fragmented shapes, uh, you might find it might be easier to colour it um, before you do the, the little fragments. Okay, so uh, represent your relatives and friends around about, those people that you miss, those people that you're fragmented from, and we're going to interconnect you using, uh, using curves and undulations and uh, curved marks which which are going to take us around the composition now interconnection is how pictures work because let me show you 
any picture that you produce, and this, this is what all kids are great with creativity, uh, but they can be very fragmented with composition, as can adults. And this is going to be a little key into next week's lesson. Next week's lesson is going to be uh, an exercise based on the work of uh, Matisse. Uh, but this is going to be a little bit of an introduction to that. So when kids are drawing stuff, they maybe draw a little thing here and then a little thing over here and then there's maybe a tree here and then there's maybe a thing over here. And everything's very split up and, uh, and the, the scale, sometimes you, you draw something and then each individual element is the same sort of size. So it's a good idea when you're drawing your different people around you that they're different sizes and it just keeps things a bit interesting. Now, what you're deliberately doing is making fragmented objects around. So a large one there, a large one there, somebody here. And they're all separate from each other. But what the curves are going to do is make sure that the whole composition is going to work. And it's going to take us around the composition. So when you create a picture, you want it to flow around. So, Anne, do you want to start? You don't have a. You want to start doing other people round about? Pick one of these no. pens. So, you've got colours. So, these colours are great. So, if, if you're beginning to colour them in, uh, what you could do, and I'm going to show you some of Anthony Gowdy's work, what you could do is do the base colour within the shape, a little bit like Anne's done there. With the with the yellow, yeah, you can do it. your your relatives and friends represent them how you want. You can make them all boxy robot faces. You can make them all slices of pizza. You can make them all different types of food if you want. <laughs> you can you can introduce any concepts to this you want. Anything goes here, uh, but the only restrictions is that you make them very thick marker pen lines so that when you do the thin lines of the fragments or the broken up bits then uh, it's going to there's going to be a difference in in line also so that you know where to put the color you're going to be putting color within the thick lines and then you're going to be that just gently uh, changing the color within the Archie? fragments he's a burger he's a burger so uh Aaron's friend Archie is a burger so, Archie may be watching that. Mm. Mary looks a bit like me, but a longer mouth and longer eyes. Now, if anyone's doing some other little art lessons, or, or even wants to have a half hour each day where they, where they kind of work on this throughout the week, there's another couple of ideas that you can do, and this is more for the parents to, to keep them guided or give them a project to do for the rest of the week. Maybe another couple of half hour sessions. Um, this is one of Sophie's abstract pieces and you can take paint, you yeah, can take uh, yeah. anything you want. And if you've got one of these Tipex, uh, Tipex pens, it's quite good and you can draw fragments. And uh, so if you do some random shapes and abstract uh, bits of colour, what you can do is draw with white. What's that? White, but I don't it's know. two whites actually. Yeah, it's not going to work though. You need an opaque white. Uh, I think like opaque white. Tipex. Is that opaque? No. <laughs> white coloured pencils sometimes works with the decent coloured pencils. Uh, the other thing that you can do is take coloured paper, pair of scissors, and cut out lots of little shapes of colour and then create your own mosaic with prick stick and, and shapes of colour and draw out your design in pencil before you start it. Um, it's always a good idea when you're doing the mosaics of colour to just leave slivers of the white paper or even do it on black paper and leave slivers of black in between Mom, the... Uh, are you watching that? <laughs> in, be, in between the, uh, the shapes, okay, to create the line. Are you, are you, are you? Okay, so they're all projects that you can do. Other than that, you would just be 
finishing off your designs here. Now, what we talked about before was scale. So what I want to see here, Aaron, is that some of these are all looking like roughly the same scale. So we want to have some big and, and maybe fill a, a, a space here with a large piece of, piece of food. <laughs> this is all very food based. And then, and then they're all representing all your friends and you're the pizza in the middle. Um, so you want to change up the scale. So you've got big bits and small bits. We've got, we've got all sorts of creatures here. I want to show the camera. Can I show the camera Look at your, my your colours? Uh, oh, here's the camera coming round. So get a wee close up on this so. because this is is looking really cool. Hi. So what we want is all these all these sections to be coloured in. And if you start dropping different colours in different shapes it starts to combine to make a total. Um, a good way to do this is choose, when you're colouring in lots of different fragments, is to choose similar colours. Sophie hasn't done this and, and it's worked out quite well, but, in, but the problem will be to describe something else in a different colour, everything's going to be roughly the same because it's all different colours. So you could do a green one, which moves from green into... Uh, maybe turquoise uh, and and yellow so it's similar colors of the color wheel I chose some of these next ones. I have no so idea. if you think about the colors that are next to each other in the rainbow uh, they're called analogous colors which is another new word for you all to to think about and they're all similar colors so uh, blue is a similar color to green which is a similar color to yellow which is a similar color to orange orange and then red and then pink and then purple so as, as long as they're close to each other in color and then maybe there's dark and light versions of the colors because that's what Anthony Gaudi did to group different parts of his fractured images so this being all types of blues but to make it interesting he often would change up the shade of purple it might be, or the shade of blue, and then it, it, it creates uh, what we call a texture. So this is why breaking things up can make sense within a painting or a drawing, uh, because it's a, it's a change of scale. Does anyone know what a texture is? Yeah. New word, texture. What's a texture? Um, it's like a different... Um, touch or something like this is yeah a texture, sometimes you can feel a texture, a texture. Mm -hmm. so what's the difference between that and that um one is that that one's kind of rough bumpy rough. bumpy or rough and, and that, that one's can smooth. more smooth but this is even smoother yeah that's smooth. okay so it's the difference the tech textures is all it is is um it's the opposite of really smooth so you can have a smooth texture but which doesn't have much texture and you can have a really heavy texture which is bumpy 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 but that's what we think about it in 3d bumpy but when we're thinking about it in so two dimensions i.e drawings and flat things Maybe, yeah, it looks like it. I like these bits. These bits are great. That's the hair. Uh, yeah, I love that. Good. Okay, remember to enclose everything in shapes. Good, yeah, good. We might just need to close off the bottom of that straw so that we can enclose the pieces of fragments. Okay, and this chocolate. Good. Oh, whoops, I forgot to do that on the same side. Okay, when you think you've got enough friends and family around about you, you can start to add in the shapes, the curves and connectors to ke which connect everyone together. And you can you can do that by just creating curves around. Now every time that you get onto another element of your picture, you stop and then continue on the other side. So that your picture sits above the and curves, be and all these curves are going to connect everyone together to remind us that even though we're isolated, 
We're still connected with everyone, and we will be after this nightmare ends. So, uh, everyone who's watching, that's my friend Archie. That's my friend Aaron Mac. That's Donna. Uh, no, who? Aaron Mac. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, well, I call him Aaron Mac. Okay. Yeah. And, and then that's, uh, that is my family, that, which is my dad's family, mm -hmm. and that's my mum's family. And that's Ellis and that's Jane. So Mum's family is represented by chocolate. <laughs> they they all quite like chocolate. Uh, and sweetie is because your dad's a sweetie. Yeah, dad. <laughs> okay. So yeah, let's that's have dad there. That's, that's Scott. Yeah. If uh, if you kids at home are going out uh, as well as these guys, which is very very good. Um, and huh? let let's see them all fragmented and get some colour into it. Um. They can start colouring before they finish the drawing if they want because sometimes it might give you an idea as to the best way to do the next, uh, the next symbol or face or, or item of your design. Uh, so some of these guys are colouring before the rest of it's finished. That's absolutely fine. They might not get this all finished in an hour, uh, which I, uh, I kind of suspected but it may also give your parents at home an idea of what to do within a half hour of your time before Friday or before even <coughs> next Monday before the next lesson of the uh, of the Naismith Home School which is going to be next week at 11 o'clock. We so have to get these done before 11 o'clock um, next Tuesday, okay? Oh, yeah. there's, there's, there's your homework set right there. Okay, Miss Sophie. Uh, yes, kids. me, Peanut. Uh, yeah, so let's have a look at some of my paintings. So here's a painting here, uh, this is one of, one of mine, so uh, you can see that, <laughs> so that you can see that immediately when you look at, um, when you look at how the composition works, how things uh, move within the, the composition, that there's interconnecting parts of the composition and there's fragmented parts of the composition. And that just means that, uh, that it, it's red as, as different shapes. I like to sort of simplify things down as different shapes. Now, as the shapes get smaller uh, and uh, there's a, a dramatic change of scale, the size of the shape of the of the item and then the size of the shapes inside are very different. What happens is you get a very different effect depending on how close you look at the image. And it's it's kind of an echo of what happens in the world as well. Sometimes we call it fractals. New word as well. Fractals is when you look closer and closer at something and it's made up of the same shape that made up the whole. So if a triangle, you looked closely at that and it was made up of lots of, of the same triangles, and then you looked at one of those triangles and it was made, made up of lots of triangles, that's called fractals and uh, that you're gonna learn that in, uh, if you take physics or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, and the, the, the reason I look at fractals is because it's a good way of representing the world because the, the smallest thing you can think about... What's the smallest thing that you, that you know of? An, an atom. An atom. atom. Well done. Hmm. Well, they, they've taken physics. Uh, <laughs> good job, Ox guy. Um, so atoms, yes. And what's the next... Well, if you join a few atoms together, what do you get? An object. An object. Yeah. Well, a few atoms together makes up a molecule. Ooh. That's a little bit like in your house where your family might make up a house. Yeah. So almost everything that you can think about has its smaller sections yeah, to it. Yeah, like this could be made yeah. up of atoms and mm -hmm. molecules. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you wouldn't know it because you can't see them because they're so small. Yeah. So the world... So the world's made up of continents. Continents are made up of one. Countries. Countries are made up of um, cities and towns. Cities and, cities and towns are made up of 
people. Lots of little, well, lots of little houses first, and then there's lots of little people in the houses, and then people are made up of lots of little cells, and they're like microscopic. So if I looked in a microscope at you, uh, I would see lots of little cells. So everything's made up of all those smaller parts, and it's interesting to have an image that you look at where you can look closely and there's lots of smaller things happening and you look further away and there's lots of bigger things happening. So I'm going to show you one of my paintings that I've got on the easel right now. And this, and what I'm going to do, this is why artists are always standing back from their work. Because if you look at it on this scale, we see the landscape very clearly and we see the larger shapes and how they interact with each other, how, how the big shapes join in uh, with some of the smaller shapes. But the smaller shapes just get read as texture because all texture is, is lots of little shapes. When you think about it on two dimensions, so let's get closer up to it. And there's not lots of little shapes now. There's large areas of thick paint. That's distance. And then there's... Dad. What's that? That's distance. Distance. You see something from further away looks really small. Now it looks really big. Yeah. As Father Ted said, <laughs> that sheep's not small, it's just far away. <laughs> Was it okay? <laughs> Those are far away. So we're learning about um, changing the scale of what we draw and being aware of what scale something should be. Scale is a fancy way of saying size. Change is not, is not a bathroom scales. Bathroom scales. No, or fish scales. But fish scales is another way which a, a surface is fragmented into different different parts, isn't it? Because it's got like... And then when your fragments, your different parts and fragments are the same, imagine you had all the same shape of fragments, it would be a pattern. But our fragments here are all very random, as if it's all been smashed up. Just like Anthony Gaudi did in his buildings. He covered loads of surfaces and all these different colours of fragmented like shapes. Yeah. Mine looks awesome. Yeah, that looks pretty awesome now. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Mm -hmm. In a red? In a red? Okay, anyone, anyone coming up with any uh, ideas. questions or ideas or anyone want to let us know how they're getting on? Leave us a comment. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. do, 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 do you say that? Yeah. Dad, can yes. we do the same thing to these as I did to that? You can, you can. I would do, I would do uh, another couple of faces here, okay. and then after, I think probably at the end, colour them in. But I like how you've done that first, so that you can get an idea of how it's going to turn out once you start colouring it. Okay, maybe okay. I could do a triangle next one. Oops. Let's slip there. <laughs> okay, if, uh, let's take some symbols. Uh, so I'm going to first draw a triangle. Okay, if you have, if you have an object, say, with the thick lines, 
and the lines aren't thick enough, you can go over them a couple of times like that. Because what might happen is you might start to lose the outline. So uh, Aaron's lines are nice and thick on the outside, so he's not going to lose that. Um, and then when the inside is all fragmented with your fine lines, So the inside is all fragmented. So that's your, your uh, triangle there. What you might want to do when you're colouring, and I'm going to use coloured pencils here, is sort of build it up in layers so you can colour the whole section of your shape, wherever it is on your, maybe this is an eye or something, the whole section of the shape, and then you can go over parts in different... Uh, different versions of the colour. So you maybe take a darker blue, but you take all colours that are similar to each other and it will allow you to have what is called an analogous range of colours. So you'll have detail and texture that you'll create, but you'll be able to read the whole shape as, say, greeny blue. So when you're colouring, you can colour in all different parts. So what we're going to end up with is our own little colouring books. We've actually created our own colouring books. And they're going to be, so, sometimes the smaller the shapes that you make, the more complex your, the more complicated your image is going to be. So what you'll have to do is, can I show the camera yours? And this is great. See this little... This little face in the middle, it's really colourful and brilliant. But if you cover your whole image in colourful, uh, multicoloured things like that, that don't change, it's going to be really, really busy and it's going to, and it's going to, you're not going to be able to pick out uh, details. So you've got to make sure that other things are similar colours that you do. But it doesn't mean to say that some of them, maybe you want to represent. Sophie likes loads of different colours, don't you? Yeah. You are a fan of rainbow colours, and uh, that can represent Sophie in the middle. Uh, somebody whose favourite colour, maybe you know your your uncle's favourite colour, and he's like uh, represented in this little guy here. So you make That's all different Brody. versions of That's that colour. That's Brody. Yeah. Brody's the triangle. Alice and Brody are watching, and they say hi. Alice and Brody are watching, Alice and Brody. Alice has done a pizza you as well. Watched, you pizza watched face. our last one, didn't you? <laughs> and yeah. Katie and Jamie are watching. Cool! Yes. And then yeah. John you. Yeah. And Harry's watching. How do you know Harry's watching? I'm watching the other mm -hmm. you... ah, This is the last video. Uh, Everybody's saying yeah. how well you're doing. Oh, we've got the comments going, so... Joe, can you tell us if there's any other comments well, that want to... there are lots of comments of people saying, wow, love your art, Scott, and how do you do it? So they would like to see... Oh, more so while the, yeah, while the kids are working away, I'm going to away, yeah. maybe do a little tour of the studio for you, uh, hopefully, the yeah, kids... Yeah, so this is just the downstairs. This is uh -huh. the studio part mm -hmm. where our dad works. It's the downstairs. Yeah, yeah, and this is where all the mess happens, so... Yeah, all um, the mess. Mm -hmm. One time I got paint all over my hands. Yeah, I, one time I got paint all over my feet and I went uh, walking around uh, the house and got it all over the carpet and took four hours to clean up. Four I think hours. anyone that oh, does yeah, oil painting. That paint on the carpet? Yeah, anyone that does oil painting is going to uh, we have relate to that. Um, there's loads of paintings around. At, at the moment, I can't get anything framed, so I, I had some, all, all my framed stuff get stored upstairs. And uh, at the moment, the, uh, the frame is closed, uh, but it doesn't matter anyway, because the paintings aren't going to galleries, because they're closed. <laughs> um, so uh, it's all a bit uh, crazy. So a uh, smaller painting here. 
So again, you can kind of see some of the, uh, I'm trying to base some of these lessons uh, even for the kids on, on concepts that I think about when I'm painting. Uh, smaller shapes and larger shapes and their interrelationship between each other. Uh, so this is the Coolin Hills, or inspired by the Coolin Hills. Most of what I paint is like, um, uh, it's, it's done from memory or from imagination based on experiences of the west coast of Scotland. So that's one that's just getting finished. I'll show you one that is... Uh, this one's on its way finished. I think it's just about finished, which is why it's... Normally I don't sign them until uh, they're completely finished. So uh, this one I believe is, is just about done. Again, you can see that uh, myself, I'm I'm influenced by uh, mosaic and and fragmented image, images. I had a painting called Fragmented. Um, sometimes I might call it Fragmented Spectrum and things like that. Um, but these concepts of um, when you uh, you know when you think about fractals, I had a an exhibition called Fractal Landscape, and uh, and the these concepts that I talk about in the in the kids classes really relate quite a lot to to what I'm doing uh, in my own work uh, but trying to trying to relate it to to kids work I thought would have been quite difficult uh, and instead it's been something that certainly the, the kids seem to be uh, quite enthusiastic about so that's good that's good uh, I call my paintings abs uh, Atmospheric abstractions. So, there's another one. So it's trying to capture the. It's got a couple of years ago online. Uh, been ever since, kids. So, hey, Lucas. Lucas is saying hi. Hi, Lucas. Remember Lucas? Hi. Lucas. He's called the horse, funnily enough. Hi Lucas. Is that Lucas from up the road? Lucas? Yeah, that used to be our neighbour. Ah, Lucas. Lucas. Are we talking to Lucas? Hello. Mm. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Lucas, there we are. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Hello. Hello. Hello everybody. Hello. So obviously I remember Lucas and... And yeah. Cody. Lucas Hi Cody. Cody. Hi. Yeah, Cody from Drumfern Road. Yes. So, uh, other things. So, I'll maybe show you a painting that is on its way, uh, and you can see that sometimes uh, when I start a painting, it can uh, look a bit like this. So, it can be completely colourless at the beginning, or but I vary up how uh, how it progresses. Um, you can see some of this painting here being painted. I was working on this yesterday. Uh, very little of it done so far. There's a fair bit of work still to do on it, but I, I recorded this live in the studio yesterday when I was giving everyone a heads up about the about the YouTube video. You can find that on Facebook, the last post on Facebook, I think it was. Uh, this is just a little 30 by 30. Um, again, the texture uh, from early layers ends up giving you uh, all that fragmented and uh, broken up shapes um, that I keep for later on. Uh, this is a slightly bigger one. And again, these fragmented shapes and the, the, the movement of the colour goes gradually in some areas and, and very abruptly in others. And it's very much trying to um, fragment or break up uh, the shapes and planes from the landscape. Maria Walker's been watching and she's asking about acrylics Maria. versus oils. Oh yeah, I get asked that lots because most people when they are painting in the house or something like that they don't want to be uh, worrying about oil paint and all its different mediums. 
um, acrylic paint I do work with. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, some of my work it's it's probably half and half uh, that I th th this is all oil. Um, however, Dad, yes. I'm I'm done colouring in. Now. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Oh, can we get a shot of that then? Hi. Nice. Good. <laughs> okay, so we've got a multicoloured one there, so if you're colouring it in, feel free to make some parts of it completely multicoloured, uh, which uh, Anthony Gowdy did at times as well. Uh, but other times, some of the shapes, you want to relate the colours quite closely so that you still read the shape as a whole. Uh, okay, the acrylic question was... Um, I, I Generally, I work with acrylic when I want... Um, a contrast of different textures. Um, I would say that if you're working in acrylic because of um, uh, necessity, uh, then it's a shame because you really want to be working in acrylic if you want to embrace the uh, feel of acrylic. You, you want to, your whole painting will go in a certain direction depending on what um, type of paint or tool you, that you're using um, and it will guide you and and your um, you know if you're going to be blending a lot of oil paint together you might end up with something a little bit softer than if you were working in acrylic um, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it in acrylic it just means that it's it's not as intuitive to get there in acrylic basically because it dries quicker but you can use retardant and you can use there's various ways around things with acrylic but I always feel that um, if you work in acrylic you shouldn't w worry about missing out in oils you should just embrace what acrylic does uh, same with uh, watercolour I mean what painting in watercolour is so so different from painting in oil some people say, oh, painting in watercolour is more difficult because you can't change things or you need to paint very quickly so that it doesn't dry. Uh, I think all that's nonsense because things are only as difficult as you make them. Um, oil paint can be very complicated, very uh, in-depth and, and uh, you, you make it as complicated and as difficult as you want to. I think some people say that um, cycling doesn't give you as much... Um, exercise as running does uh, and the answer to that is you're not cycling fast enough or you're not cycling up a big enough hill um, so yeah you, you you make your own limitations and uh, limitations can sometimes guide what you do with artwork so if you limit your palette you end up uh, with a um, oh hold on we got Aaron and Sophie's school shut down. Yes, Aaron and Sophie's school shut down. Uh, I think there's so many places in the world where schools are shut down. Yep. Um, that, uh, oh yeah, so Maybe Sophie's starting school. to do similar colours here. And so you can go right across the fragments. And you go right across and colour in entire shapes. Good, Sophie. Keep going, keep going. So you can, um, people who are watching do send you their pictures so we could have a wee look. Uh, if, uh, I'd want to see everyone's results. You can post them on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, anything. But as long as you add the hashtag. What's the hashtag, Aaron? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Naismith Homeschool. Naismith Homeschool. Yeah, I, I meant that. I'm using some <laughs> green, slightly darker on the inside than on the outside. That's really good, Darren. Awesome. So, uh, if you want to show us what you've done, uh, Naismith Homeschool's hashtag. Going to go into some of these other paintings. Here's something a bit different. Here's something. Oh, well, there's there's a one from the side there, um, and. So this is a longer one, you can see there's some of the softer marks and 
uh, some paintings will begin with very, very uh, fragmented feel um, and then end up very much more unified by sort of softer uh, transitions of paint colour. Um, this one I'm not entirely sure if it's finished yet, so they, they tend to sit in the studio. Um, I'm going to show you just what I've got behind here. You'll be surprised probably to see quite so many um, paintings that are on the go here. And uh, some down here. And Dad, I'm doing the lines. That's on its side. Dad, I'm doing the lines to each piece. And some of these small ones here. What are you doing? I'm doing the lines. You're doing the lines? Yeah, doing okay. The lines. Very good. Yes, yeah, a, a little bit more. Yeah. Anything that looks like maybe a tree or a branch or a or maybe a wavy or maybe a wave in the sea or something that just is a soft transition of curves. Now what that's going to do is in some of your images you're going to have lots of I'm gonna see what Anne's doing. Mm -hmm. Copying because it's it looks very cool actually. Lucas is asking if we still live close to him. If we live just outside Glasgow, Lucas, so not far. Yeah. Not yeah, far well, we it's we good. live like in Kirk can tell like if you like search it up or something. On maps, yeah. Nice, good stuff, Sos. So they're all interconnected. So all these isolated, fragmented things are all interconnected. And then your interconnections, you can, you can start to fragment those up. And then aren't you all the way to Jamie's a big leap? Mm-hmm. Because it's start to finish. What did I do with my iPad? Yep. Yeah. It's an even bigger leap if you go that way. So parents, if you've got iPads or screens that you're not using for this actual video, you can start to look up Antonio Gaudi mosaics and uh, you'll find some, some images that will inspire some of the, some of the colours and what to do with the colour. Nice. So we've got shapes coming down and splitting up those sides. I like the ears. We've got ears coming out here. Can I show this to the... Let's just show you how, what's going on with Sophie's. So we've got... It's almost like Shrek type ears going on here. We've got Shrek little ears. little antennae. <laughs> so yeah, uh, looking good. But the colour, look at those colours there. That's just... Superb. But what Sophie's doing here is she's going right across all the shapes uh, with a single colour uh, to create a stripy um, thing there. Okay. And, um, so. <laughs> Just show you how I did my interconnecting. Aaron's showing his. Nice. Pizza, burger, hot dog, sweetie. So there's pizza, which is me, and then there's a burger, that which is my friend Archie, and then there's a hot dog, Aaron McDonough. The sweets is my dad's family, the chocolate is my mum's family, the juice box is, or juice cup, whatever, I don't that was Alice, and the, the bottle of soda is my friend Jamie. <laughs> Okay, good stuff, good stuff. So we're just coming on, it's coming on to 12 o'clock. You guys will be having lunch and I'm gonna say cheerio. So we're gonna sign out. What I want you to do is you can post some of these uh, results. Post some of the results, please, on uh, hashtag uh, Naismith Homeschool and uh, see if you can get these kind of to some degree of finish and if you want 
other projects like that, um, then cut paper uh, to create some collage. Uh, if you've got lots of, uh, sometimes in a scrapbook, sometimes kids have got scrapbooks. Sophie's got a scrapbook and she just doesn't know what to do with some of the stuff. But if you uh, use a, a pair of scissors and some glue and take uh, textures, you can do this with um, old magazines. So if you look through magazines and you get colour from it, maybe it's a page of lots of blues, cut it all into different little triangular uh, or little shapes as if you've smashed up that page and you keep it and you keep your blues separate from your, keep it all in different piles of different colours and then you can just prick stick them down onto paper. Nice to work on black paper for black lines in between the sections and nice to work on white paper for the white lines in between the sections. Keep looking at the Antonio Gaudi for inspiration for mosaics and uh, if you can get some work done before next week on Tuesday, share up the results. Thanks a lot, uh, we're going for some lunch, we've had an hour of creative time in the studio. Uh, good luck with whatever you're doing with isolation, but let's all keep interconnected. Like me. Okay. Pizza face. Signing out. <laughs> see you next. See you next week at the same time. Pizza face. Eleven o'clock UK time on a Tuesday. Uh, I'm certainly going to do one more anyway because I already know what I'm going to do for that, and it's a little exercise. Next week's might only be a half an hour, something like that. Um, but hopefully, uh, by the end of what we do with it all, there'll be enough creative stuff started for you to expand on that on other other lessons when you're at the house with the kids and they're driving you crazy. <laughs> See you later, bye. bye.